What's up? It's Ben from Wad Prep, and today this video is all about the Benchmark Workout Jackie. So if you're someone who's going to attempt or trying to maximize your score on the CrossFit Benchmark Workout Jackie, then this is the video for you. I'm going to go over the workout, possible scaling options, time domains, and I'm going to go over some special strategies that should help you maximize your score. So the workout Jackie is simple. It's a thousand meter row on the erg, on the rower, 50 thrusters with an empty barbell. So for, for guys, it's 45 pounds empty barbell. For ladies, it's a 35 pound empty barbell. And then 30 pull-ups, just standard chin over the bar pull-ups. This workout should be a burner. It's not quite as intense as Fran, but the time domain should be roughly in the five to 10 minute range. The best athletes in the world did Jackie head to head to head in the regionals. Bottom line is that some of the best exercisers in the entire world all seem to finish in the low five minute range. Myself personally, my personal record is just under six minutes. I actually just checked today. The last time I did it, it was in 601. And the good news for you is that I'm actually going to be attempting Jackie on this video. So stay tuned and you can actually see me either practice what I preach or burn up miserably in a pile of doom. <laughs> it's gonna be a tough workout because Jackie is a burner. If Jackie is taking you 13, 14 minutes, then you should absolutely have scaled this workout. I might even go as far as to say like, this should be a sub eight minute or sub nine minute workout. And if it's not, then you're not necessarily getting the stimulus that we want and it would be better for you to scale the movements. When it comes to warming up for this workout, I wouldn't do anything other than just simply practice the movements maybe add a little weight to the, to the thruster bar just to get a little bit of a stimulus there, but practice just a couple sets, maybe a, a 200 meter row and 15 barbell thrusters and five pull-ups. Do like a round or two of that. Otherwise, your warm-up is kind of going to come from this row. So first things first with the rower, it's very simple. You're just yanking on that chain until you row the thousand meters. I would suggest going into the, to the computer on the rower and, and changing it to a 1000 meter countdown. That tends to be what I like to row. And we will talk a little bit about the strategy of like how to pace on the rower, but if you want a deep dive on how to maximize your efficiency and your, your stroke rate and your power and making sure that you're, you're rowing properly, we have a really great video here on YouTube that I'm gonna make sure to link in the comments below and in the description. So be sure to check that out. After the rower, then we're gonna move over to the barbell. The barbell is unweighted and it's a very simple movement. It's a thruster. Again, we have a full video here on YouTube, the ultimate guide to thrusters. I highly recommend you check it out. But with the unweighted barbell, you don't need to be too crazy concerned about making sure that every bit and piece is perfect. You're essentially taking this bar, you pick it up, you get on your front rack position, which is on your shoulders. I'm going into a full squat, so hip crease below the top of the knee, and then at the top, my arms are fully extended, hips fully extended, knees fully extended. So with an unweighted bar, you can kind of move really fast. We'll talk a little bit about pacing the thrusters uh, in a minute, but the, the bottom line is the finished movement looks like this and you have to make sure that you pass through a full depth front squat in between each rep. And then obviously the pull up, it's a standard issue pull up where you can do them strict, kipping, butterfly, whatever you want. The main key is that you have to pass through or start from a full dead hang position. So full hang and then chin above the bar. So whether it's strict like that or kipping, or you could do butterfly, as long as you pass through a fully extended elbow and get your chin above the bar on that horizontal plane, that is a good rep. So with that being said, if you can't hit this workout, you don't feel like you're gonna be able to do those movements to the standards, then there's a few things that we can do. We can scale reps, range of motion, and load. If you've ever listened to my podcast that I do with Make Wads Great Again, John Woolley, it's called the Scale and Bail Podcast. If you haven't listened to it, I'll make sure to link up the show below. In our podcast, I always talk about how when you scale workouts, there's several ways to do it. You can scale your range of motion, you can scale your reps, and you can scale the weight. So if we're scaling range of motion here, you could potentially, maybe if you're unable to do a full squat, with, even with a light barbell, you can't do a full squat. You could squat maybe to a medicine ball, you could squat to a box, you can, I don't know, you squat to a chair. You could change the reps by, rather than doing 50 thrusters, you could do 30 thrusters in a modified version of Jackie. There's so many different ways to scale workouts, but a few that I would suggest, if there's a couple sticking points that I see people having in this workout, if they're trying to RX it, 
I think the first sticking point is probably the pull-ups. 30 pull-ups for, for some people is just frankly too much volume and they're not gonna be able to do pull-ups. If you're trying to learn strict pull-ups, obviously you know the drill. Uh, I will make sure to link to my pull-up guide in the links below. Um, I have guides here on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and everywhere and courses on our website that will help you learn strict pull-ups, skipping pull-ups and butterfly pull-ups. So no matter which one you're trying to learn, you can go grab those guides. But if you're just trying to take a tidbit away from this video, if you can't do at least a few kipping pull-ups, then you should definitely scale down to something like maybe a jumping pull-up, reducing the pull-up volume from maybe 30 to 15, or you can do all kinds of different versions of uh, pull-up modifications that I've mentioned in previous videos. There's a ton of stuff. The main key here is with high effort and high output, you want your score falling somewhere in that five to 10 minute range. If you're scaling, I don't want you finishing at five minutes. That means you probably scaled a little bit too much. But if you scale this workout and end up in that seven to 10 minute range, that is a great sign that you scaled properly. You could, in theory, go with a lighter thruster. So rather than doing thrusters with a 45 pound bar for me, I could maybe hold a 15 pound dumbbell in each hand, or I could scale down and, and hold a, a trainer bar, which a trainer bar will weigh 15 pounds. I could do thrusters with a trainer bar. Or instead of thrusters, I could just do hand thrusters, which is where I squat all the way down and just put my hands up in the air. That would be a great scale. If I was having, you know, maybe my grandmother do Jackie uh, in some way, shape or form, I'd probably have her scale down the amount of rowing that she has to do. We'd probably do, I don't know, maybe like 30 uh, squats with hands above our head maybe with a broomstick if, if we really wanted to have a, a bar. And then obviously we would modify the pull-ups hev heavily. We would probably do some sort of just uh, PVC pull down with the band. That would be a very, very, very scaled approach. But the bottom line is to get the stimulus to Jackie, we need to have some form of, of pulling on the row, some sort of pressing with a squat, AKA a thruster or some version of it, and then some sort of pull-up, okay? So if you have decided I'm gonna do this work and I'm gonna do it as prescribed, now I would love to go over a few of the strategy pieces and also the gear that I would suggest that you use in this workout. First, let's talk about the gear and then we'll get into the strategy. So there's only really two pieces of gear that you might use for this workout. The first, some form of gymnastic grip could be really beneficial for you. You don't need them on the rower, you don't need them with the barbell, but you might want them for your set of pull-ups because obviously when we get to the strategy, I'm gonna tell you, if you wanna get your best score, you really need to push like max effort on the pull-ups. A lot of times when people go max effort on pull-ups, guess what? They rip their pretty little hands. So I would suggest investing in a form of grips or you can watch my hand care hack videos. I have, a, I have two videos here on YouTube um, and Facebook and Instagram that teach you how to utilize different hand care mechanisms to make sure that you're not ripping. So you can either go the old school approach, which is shave your calluses, shave them down and go bare hands. That's what I normally have done in the past. Today, when I attempt it, because I haven't uh, shaved my calluses recently, I am just gonna be wearing a pair of grips that should lock me into the pull-up bar and I should hopefully be able to do all 30 unbroken, no problem. But I do not want you ripping. That's the key here, because if you rip in the middle of the workout, even if, you, even if you're 15 reps in, those last 15 reps of bloody ripped hand pull-ups are going to bang you up, they're gonna hurt your score and they're gonna hurt the rest of your workouts for the remainder of the week and maybe month. So invest in a pair of grips. Obviously, if you wanna know what gear I'm using right now, just click the uh, gear guide link below and we will make sure to send you the links to the specific ones that I recommend. Secondarily, we also have, you could use weightlifting shoes. So these are just the Innovate Fast Lifts. Uh, I recently got these. These are super, super lightweight. So they're actually like not much heavier than like normal CrossFit shoes, which is pretty cool. Um, so they're not gonna weigh you down on things like pull-ups and toes to bar, like the pull-ups in this workout. I've never been a big proponent of like trying to keep your shoes really light, but I have noticed these are super freaking light. But what you'll notice is that when you're wearing weightlifting shoes, the heel is raised up. So I'm, this is either like half inch or three quarter inch, it's probably three quarter inch rise of the heel, which makes the squatting pattern easier. If you've ever used weightlifting shoes or put a five pound plate underneath your heels or worn high heels, which I personally haven't, but um, I've seen ladies who can squat really well in high heels. So if you have your heels lifted up, you're gonna be able to squat a lot more easily. And because of that, it's gonna make those thrusters easy. All right, now let's talk strategy. So regardless of which option you're choosing to pursue this workout, whether you're going RX or maybe you're modifying with a couple of the modifications I talked about, you should be smoked by the end of this workout, but it's long enough that you shouldn't start off too strong. So let's start with the rower. 
For the rower, obviously, like I said, I have a full-blown guide on how to set up the rower perfectly and make sure that you're using the right form and yada, 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 all that kind of stuff. The one thing I would say is for this particular workout, it would be more beneficial to have a hips-high rowing technique rather than a squatty rowing technique. You're trying to engage your hamstrings a little bit more, which is the more proper way to row. Um, and if you watch the video, we talk about that a little bit more. But keeping your hips high, keeping your knees a little bit more extended will, will help you load your hamstrings and glutes rather than smoking your quads because you will smoke your quads on the thrusters. The, the pacing technique that I would use for the rower is leave a little bit in the tank. So for me, I'm going to come out like medium, strong. I'm going to go kind of hot in the middle and then I'm going to slowly taper down a little bit towards the end so that I'm finishing this row with a nice deep breath, kind of calming myself down. And then when I get to the barbell, I don't waste any time getting the barbell. I pick it up and I'm gonna to try to do 50 unbroken. Same thing goes for that pull-up bar. Not everyone's gonna be able to do that, but I will talk about a couple different techniques. But the main mistake to avoid here on the rower is going full out. If you sprint on that thousand meter row, you will crash and burn on the thrusters and the pull-ups and you're gonna sacrifice a lot of time. So I'd rather you have a little bit in the tank for the first half of the workout, which is the row, and then for the second half of the workout, you're gonna have more energy to attack it with a full head of steam. So pace on the row, I'm probably gonna be in the mid 150s just to leave a little bit in the tank so that I can push it on the thrusters and the pull-ups and I still should be able to get a good score. If you do the math, if it takes you, let's say, two minutes per 500 meters. That means after four minutes, you'll be done that thousand meter row. And then you have plenty of time to attack the other two movements if you wanna stay in that five to 10 minute range. So that's what I would suggest. And then when it comes to the thrusters, so we've come off the rower, we have a little bit left in the tank. We, we didn't go slow, we're tired at this point, but we're, we're not so tired where we can't pick up the bar. So we're gonna immediately go to that bar and I want you to hit a big set, ideally, I don't want you to do any more than two or three sets on those 50 thrusters. It'd be better if you could do it in one. Here's what I would suggest. If the rules allowed, whether you're in a competition or at your gym, what I would suggest is that if you, as soon as you pick up this bar, it's never hitting the ground again. So if you need to rest, let's say you do a set of, of 30 thrusters, you're like, oh man, I'm getting tired. Rather than resting here or resting overhead, all I want you to do is like after that last thruster, just bring the barbell on your back. You can take your hands, you can go like this. <sighs> I can take a much bigger breath with the barbell on my back, but it's not so much that I'm gonna put the bar down, waste a bunch of time, walk around. I have the barbell here ready to go. Take like two or three breaths, get it back in the front rack, and then I'm back to my thrusters. If that's allowed, that is something that I suggest, and I have used it in, in Jackie's long, long ago to help rest in the middle of those thrusters. But ideally, what I would want you to do, again, we talk about this in the Ultimate Guide to Thrusters, which is a video resource that's totally free to you. What I would suggest is make sure that you get into cadence where you're remembering to breathe. So the thruster cadence I normally do is breathe out and then in as the bar is coming back down. So it's going out on the way up, in on the way back down. And then if you do that, you're gonna make sure that you're getting enough oxygen into your lungs to hopefully power through all 50 of those reps. So don't hold your breath. Make sure that your stance, your feet are strong. You shouldn't be moving around at all. You should get those feet screwed into the ground. Good squatting stance. So with the squatting stance, I normally suggest outside of the shoulders and then just rep those suckers out. You can actually think about in the middle of the workout if you want, focus more on pressing with your arms. And then when your arms get tired, press with your legs. Like I kind of, I do whatever it takes in my mind to just keep moving on the thrusters. I would suggest finding a pace and just sticking with it and almost not blacking out, but you wanna get into a deep, dark place in these thrusters. There's, if, when it starts to hurt, you can probably do a lot more reps than you ever realized past that point. So keep moving. 50 seems like a lot, but again, with this light, empty barbell, two, maybe three sets, or if you can push it, one unbroken set is the ideal way to attack this. If you have to do more than three sets, then chances are it would have been smart for you to scale down that weight or that range of motion. So after we are done pushing the thrusters, you're done that set of 50, you are at the last section of the workout. Depending on your ability level, you might only have 20 seconds left of exercise, right? When we get to that pull-up bar, for me, I should hopefully be able to do those 30 unbroken pull-ups in less than 30 seconds because the butterfly cadence is gonna be so fast. Don't waste any time transitioning to that bar. If you're someone who needs to scale down and maybe do single reps, um, you know, single reps is actually a very valid way to do this workout. And I've seen people get really solid scores doing stuff like this, where they literally, they just do a rep, drop down, jump back up, do a rep, right? 
and they just do this for all 30 reps. That's going to be a lot more beneficial than doing a set of like four or five and then just, you know, like walking around the gym and wasting a ton of time. So try to find a nice steady cadence on the pull-ups. If you can, maybe before you get there, what I would suggest, like let's say if I had to break up the thrusters and the pull-ups, it'd be cool to maybe try something like row at a steady pace that hurts just a little. And then the thrusters, I break up into a set of 30, rack on the back, take three breaths, 20 more reps, that's my 50. Put the barbell down. Don't drop an empty barbell or else your coach might kill you. And then come over here to the bar and you could do something for the 30 pull-ups. You could do 12, 10, 8. That would be a great way to break it up. I like descending rep schemes. You could try to break it up into two sets. You could do sets of five if you really wanted to. But come up with a rep scheme ahead of time. What I don't want you to do is get over this bar and just pray. And, and do, do like 10 reps and then you're smoked and you can hardly do any more. We want to leave a little bit in the tank enough so that we don't burn out. But for some athletes, uh, like myself, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna leave everything I can possibly can on the table coming from those thrusters into the pull-ups where hopefully by the time I get to the 30th rep, it's like I can hardly move because I'm going so fast. And it's not gonna look pretty, it's gonna look a little bit sloppy, but again, my goal here is to maximize my time. Um, if you're someone who wants to be a little bit more conservative, maybe coming over here again with that set of like 12, 10, eight, that could be a great way to break up the reps. Don't drop from the bar and then walk around the gym. I'm just gonna challenge you to like, when you drop from the bar, drop, maybe take a step back so you can jump into the next rep. <sighs> take a couple deep breaths, like really center yourself with a couple super deep breaths and then get back on that bar. I don't want, there's no reason for you to walk away and travel around the gym when you should be doing pull-ups, okay? So with those pacing things in mind, let's go over them really quick. Pace the rower, hold a little bit in the tank. So I don't want max effort on the rower, maybe like 90% on the rower, 85 to 90%. Then the thrusters is more like 90 to 95%. Maybe, a, maybe full effort if you're someone who's really trying to maximize your score and you've done this workout before. And then when it gets to the pull-ups, it's full send, as hard as you can go to accumulate those 30 reps. And remember, singles can be really effective if you're efficient at jumping up and into each rep with that nice strong kip. Otherwise, come up with a predictable rep scheme that you can stick with. I like to write it on a whiteboard and really focus on it to make sure I'm pushing as hard as I can. So with that, we've talked about the standards of movements for Jackie. We've talked about different scalings and modifications based on that time domain. We've talked about uh, the gear that you might want to use. And we've also talked about the strategy that I would suggest when it comes to attempting this workout to make sure you don't crash and burn on the rower and then fail on everything else. Leave a little bit in the tank, finish strong, and crush Jackie, get your best score ever. If you are someone who wants to get coaching like this, get strategy, get feedback from coaches, upload a video of your pull-ups and your thrusters and your rowers and have a coach analyze it. We do all of that inside of Wad Prep Masters and I'm gonna link to that below where you can try it for yourself, no risk at all. Try it and see if you like it. I also have free courses, free guides for things like pull-ups, and the mobility required for the thrusters and yada, yada. We have so much free stuff out there. And then if you're really someone who wants to take it to the next level, just join Wad Prep Academy. I have a course that'll help you get better at the rower. I have so many, I have several courses that'll help you get better at the pull-ups. And then we have a few mobility courses that'll help you improve the thruster technique. If, that, if you're interested in Wad Prep Academy, that's the best deal that Wad Prep has. You can check that out in the links below. And without further ado, if my Achilles is feeling okay after a warm up, I am going to hit this workout. That's what I'm about to do right now. I'll mess around with a few of these objects and then I'm gonna to try to hit it as hard as I can and you'll be there to watch it. Peace. First step of any crossfit workout, before you start the timer, tops off. That's gonna shave at least three seconds off my score.
I don't know if I got it right on the thrusters, but I tried. Click subscribe if you like this. Thumbs up if you did. Thumbs down if you didn't. Let me know my no reps in the comments below. Bring out them haters. Love you guys.